Hello there, this is Scott with Hilux Optics, back again to mount an old-fashioned scope onto an old-fashioned rifle. For your consideration today are the direct dovetail mounts for the 6-power long scope that turn it into a sliding 6-power long scope. These mounts are quite a bit different from previous versions. Not a lot of drilling, tapping, or any sort of machine work involved as long as you have two dovetails there on the barrel. There are quite a few little parts that go together in the rear and the front rings, so I have to disassemble this scope, take it off the rifle, and then you can follow along in the next section as I get it all put back together and mounted on. As long as you have a few basic tools and maybe a Dremel just in case, all of this is pretty straightforward to put together as long as you put it together in the right order. We'll get everything mounted up. I can't get it sighted in here in the office, but we'll do that at the range as usual. And I would like to apologize in advance for all of the extra hardware that you see here on this 1885 high wall. This is one of our tester rifles, so we have extra blocks, holes, all sorts of stuff cut out of this barrel. But all you really need to focus on are the two dovetails. One down at the muzzle, one back near to the chamber, and that's pretty much it. This is going to be a lot more straightforward than it seems, and it will probably take you less time to mount this up than it will to watch this video. Alright, it's time to get that scope mounted up on the rifle. One note before we get too deep into this. The rear bunny ears mount down onto this dovetail block here. There are quite a few different rifle dovetail sizes, usually dependent on the manufacturer, and each of those manufacturers will have a certain amount of tolerance. So please let us know which manufacturer of rifle or which dovetail cut size you have so that we can fit you with the right rear dovetail block. All the dovetail blocks are just a little bit oversized or on the upper edge of the tolerances. That way you can get a nice hammer tight fit and if it's a little too big, just grind it down a little bit with a Dremel or a file and then hammer it in place. I didn't want to remove this dovetail block from the rifle now that it's in, mostly because I don't want to hammer it out and then hammer it back in on camera. So we'll just go ahead and say at this point, you've put this rear dovetail block in. Should be pretty straightforward. The scope is divided into the front and rear adjustments. The front handles the windage and the rear handles the elevation. We'll get to the actual components in a second because we have to begin with the scope tube itself. The scope is meant to sit over the whole length of the barrel and go back just a little bit extra so you can get the proper eye relief. In order to make sure your scope fits properly, there are different lengths of sunshades that are replaced right about here. Uh, in this particular setup, this is a 32 inch barrel, so I have a 7 inch sunshade. If you have a 30 inch barrel, you'd get a 5 inch sunshade, 28 inch barrel, 3 inch, and a 34 inch barrel, a 9 inch. When you are installing your sunshade, it is a good practice to go ahead and Loctite it here inside the joint. That way you don't accidentally untwist it at some point and potentially change your orientation. But we'll get to that in a moment. Since this dovetail is already in place, let's do the same thing up on the front. This is the block that goes into the front dovetail. It has an index here. That index should be facing you so that you don't have to look from the front of the gun in order to read it. That slides right in, and there are two set screws that need to be tightened down to hold it in place. I would recommend Loctiting these set screws. Although to be honest, I did not like Loctite these and they seem to have held up okay. Blue Loctite is always preferred. Red is uh, pretty darn strong, but also very difficult to remove. And there we go. This is the ring that holds the front of the scope and slides onto this front little dovetail block. That will have to go onto the scope first. And I'll show you why right now actually this ring is the part that actually indexes the scope and provides a slide stop when you're sliding the scope back this needs to sit on the front because when you pull it back it needs to hit against the front of the ring that needs to go on the outside or a frontmost part just like so i'm going to leave this loose until we get the whole scope on that way i can set the reticle to make sure it's aligned properly and set my eye relief 
For now, I'm just gonna slide it on there so I don't forget it. This will slide onto here. Little dovetail into dovetail like so. I'm gonna keep this off for now so that I can set up the rest of the scope back here to handle the elevation. Just like that. Now you may have noticed that I took the eyepiece and the lock ring and the scope caps and other parts off the scope tube. And that is because we're going to need the eyepiece clear in order to set the rear collar, or the, um, yeah, I guess we'll call it a collar, onto the scope tube. Inside this collar is a plunger and a spring. They keep pressure up against the scope. Make sure it doesn't bounce around whenever you shoot. So make sure your plunger and your spring are in there and you slide it right on to the end of the scope. I like to use a little piece of paper over the threads here for the eyepiece. That way nothing gets too jangled around while I'm sliding it on. I'm sorry, I gotta make sure to keep this in the camera frame, which I think this should be inside of, like so. Now this ring also has an index, and that index should be facing you, so it'll be back towards the eyepiece. That slid on, now we'll just set that aside. Time to start putting together the bunny ears at the rear. Again, that has an index, and the index should be facing you, so back towards where your head is going to be. That sits down on top of that dovetail, and it should have two screw holes in order to fasten that on down. See if we can get that on camera there. I recommend loctiting those screws. Once you have this installed, you're probably not going to take it off for a good long while. So we'll put those on, pretend I apply Loctite at the appropriate moment, and let's just set these screws right on in there. Just like so. I'm debating whether or not to speed this up in the editing portion of the video, but it's pretty quick to put these in. There we go, that's one. That's two. And again, pretend those are Loctited. Now we can drop the scope on in. That collar sits in between the bunny ears. Uh-oh. I lost one of the set screws for the front ring. Probably should have tightened those on. I'll grab it in a second. Front ring slides on to that dovetail. Sorry, I was trying to do it camera side first, so I couldn't see where I was going. That slides on, holds on pretty firmly. Set the bunny ears in like so. There we go. Now I'm going to have to turn this around so that you can see this next little step. Oh goodness. Now I hope this is still in frame. I think you might be able to see from there that the side of the collar has an extra little hole up here above the through hole for the cross bolt. This is where a little set screw is going to be sitting to make sure that these bunny ears stay oriented and stay inside the channel at all times. Now I haven't done this when facing on the opposite side of me, and I'm wondering how I can do this on camera so that you can see. I'm actually just going to come around over to that side for a second so I can put this set screw in. That just tightens in. It's not really a load-bearing element. Don't need to Loctite it, but there it is. Now we put the cross bolt in. The cross bolt has a little hole here, threaded hole, where the vertical adjustment's going to go through. You'll notice a similar hole up here on the top of the bunny ears. So the side with the hole and the side with the hole should be the same side. Just slide that right on in, like so. This is the vertical adjustment shaft, 
And let me turn the rifle back towards you. Like so. That adjustment, just go ahead and thread it right on in. There's a little screw here, kind of a retaining screw to make sure that this vertical adjustment doesn't back out. Again, it's not a load bearing element, it's just kind of there to provide a stopping point. Go ahead and tighten that in. And you can still turn this, it just won't back out on you if it freezes up or something of the sort. You can Loctite it if you want. I believe from the factory they most likely will be Loctited. But um, again, I've taken the Loctite off this one. It's not going to hurt anything. The cross bolt, that gets locked in place on the other side. And let me turn this rifle back around again. Like so. End of the shaft here. We're just going to slip a washer on right there. Put the locking nut on like so. Easy peasy. And flipping the rifle around one more time. The windage adjustment up here is pushed back and forth by a couple of these little screws with knurled heads. Those simply thread into the base dovetail block here, one on each side. In order to push the scope one way or another, just loosen up one, tighten the other to push it in that direction. Backwards, just go with the opposite. All this is now together. So let's put the eyepiece back on. Sorry, there's a few threads here. It's going to take me a second. Like so. Eyepiece as well. And I think uh, this might actually be out of frame. I'm trying to remember where the frame ends there. If it's off camera, just, well, it's an eyepiece. You thread it on and then there you are. I'll lock that in place. Now the final bit. In order to get the scope properly oriented and set for your particular eye relief, again, we're leaving this sliding ring loose here. This ring has that little divot that fits into this divot here. Depending on how you turn the scope and which way you twist that front ring, that's gonna be how your reticle is oriented when you pull it back. So get your reticle oriented, straightened up however you want it. Make sure that divot lines up and that should remain the orientation whenever you pull the scope back. Eye relief, same idea. Keeping it oriented, just scoot the scope forward and backward a little bit or scoot the ring around. And when it's right where you want it to be, tighten in those set screws, one of which I have to find on the ground later. This front ring may arrive a little bit tight. If so, it's easy enough just to ream out the inside with a Dremel, take off a thousandth or two, and that should be that. And that's how we put the scope together. It is a lot of little parts, but when they all come together, there's really only two pieces that you need to think about. The front where the windage happens, and the rear where the elevation happens. Loosen up that cross bolt, turn the scope in whichever way is needed to adjust it, lock it back in place. For the front, loosen up the other side, and drive it over with the opposite screw. That about does it. Now that I have taken this apart and messed with all my settings, I need to get it re-zeroed at the range, which I'm definitely more than happy to do. Whatever rifle it is y'all are putting it on, give us a call and let me know. I'm really curious what rifles are going to be shooting these scopes. In the meanwhile, have fun out there and enjoy whatever it is you're shooting.